Welcome to Global Community Church. We're so glad that you decided to join us this morning. I want you to make it a special encounter this morning between you and your Savior. God has already given us his word and God says, no matter what come your way, I will be there. So, I thank you for joining us today. Today, we want to begin a verse by verse study on Psalm 80. It's a truly beautiful psalm. It's a, it's a psalm of revival, a psalm of restoration. So, let us ask God to guide us. Father, again, we ask you to guide us by your spirit as we look into your word. Speak to the hearts of your people, speak to their hearts through your word. Your word is truth. We thank you so much. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Sometime in the summer of 1979, this breaking news came across the airwaves. It was an archaeologist named Gabriel Barclay while excavating a burial tomb near Jerusalem, he discovered two small silver scrolls. On the, score, on the scrolls were recorded a portion from Numbers chapter 6. In fact, the priestly blessing, Numbers chapter 6, uh, verses 24 to 26. Um, this scroll was a very important discovery, by the way. It was, this, it, was, it was dated back to the 7th century B.C., in other words, 700 years before the birth of Christ. And it is, in fact, the oldest written scripture that we have. It dates back all the way to the Temple of Solomon. Here is what was written on that scroll. What we find in Numbers chapter 6 and verse 24 to 26, it says, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. The children of Israel, they realized that their life was so dependent upon the blessing of God. That that prayer from Aaron, it was something that remained with them every day. They realized that the blessings of God, the face of God shining upon them was critical for their success. See, my friend, this is a blessing appealing to God to favor his people, to grant his protection and his presence and his blessing and his guidance upon his people. That word there that is translated in Numbers chapter 6 verse 24, the Lord make his face to shine upon you, is the word panem. It appears many times in the Old Testament in combination with the word, the, the God or the Lord. The face of the Lord, my friend, is a reference to the presence of God, to the grace of God, to the favor of God upon the lives of his people. You will recall when Moses brought them out of Egypt. Moses said to the Lord, Lord, I want you to go with us. And God said to Moses, I will protect you. I will provide for you. And God said to Moses, I will let my angel go before you. And then Moses said, no, no, no. Wait a minute, Lord. If we have your gifts and we have your blessing and we do not have your presence, Moses said, do not take us from there. Do not carry us. Your presence is important to us. In verse 15 of Exodus chapter 33, here's what Moses says. 
Then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from here. How will anyone know that you are pleased with me and your people unless you go with us? Moses was saying, Lord, um, if we have your gifts and your grace and all of that, and we do not have your face, which represents your presence, do not go with us. They wanted to ensure that they had the face of God, the presence of God, the shining of God upon their life. In Isaiah chapter 63, it records for us, in all their distress, he too was distressed, and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and his mercy. He redeemed them, he lifted them up, and carried them all the days of old. Look at that verse. That, that word that is translated here, the angel of his presence, literally, in the original text, it means the angel of his face. God's favor upon his people. My friend, the face of God means the presence of God. When God's face shines upon you, when God's face shines upon his people, that means God takes pleasure in us. God takes pleasure in his people. God favors his people. God's face shining upon all God's face shine upon all those who keep his covenant. It shines upon those who walk in his ways. It's an assurance that God is pleased with us. When God turns his face away from you and away from me, it is because of our own doing. It's because of our own sin. It's because of our own disobedience. Scripture tells us the face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut out the memory of them from the earth. So there we will see in the psalm, he says so many times, Lord, shine on us. Shine on us. We need your presence. We need your favor if we are going to be successful in life. Lord, shine on us. It is a horrible thing for the Lord to hide his face from you, to hide his face from me. It is an awful thing for God to hide his face from his people. When God hides his face from us, when God does not shine upon us, it means that we are disobedient when we will experience the wrath of God. Moses warned them of that just before he died. And in, next, in, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 15 to 18, here is the warning that Moses gave to them. He said, Then the Lord appeared at the tent in the pillar of cloud, and the cloud stood over the entrance of the tent. And the Lord said to Moses, you are going to rest with your ancestors, and these people will soon prostrate, them, prostrate themselves to foreign gods of the land they are entering. They will forsake me and break my covenant that I made with them. Look at the next verse. And in that day, I will become angry with them and will forsake them. I will hide my face from them, and they will be destroyed. The Lord says, many disasters and calamity will come on them, and in that day they will ask, have not these disasters come on us because our God is not with us? Verse 18, and I will certainly hide my face in that day because of all their wickedness in turning to other gods. We hear that same refrain in Psalm 67. The psalmist says, may God be merciful and bless us. 
May his face smile with favor upon us. The smiling face of God is an indication that God is pleased with us. But when this Psalm 80 was written, it was a dark day in the history of Israel. Over and over again, God has sent his prophets to warn them. We read earlier in Deuteronomy chapter 30. God said to them over and over again. I lay before you blessing and cursing. I lay before you life and blessings. And all you have to do is pledge to follow me. And God says, as long as you follow me, the favor of God will be upon you. The shining face of God will smile upon you. But if you don't, you will experience darkness. You will experience disasters. You will experience calamities. And so as we read Psalm 80, it is a dark day in Israel. They have forsaken the Lord their God. They have turned away to idolatry. And in 722 BC, God allowed the Assyrians to come in and take them away captive. As the writer of the psalm thinks of the disaster that has befallen the people of God. And Judah is still there, but he knows that unless they turn to God, the Judah will also be brought into captivity. And there were dark days. It's as if God had turned his back away from his people because they were living in disobedience. And so, as the psalmist writes, he calls for restoration. So I want you, as we walk through this psalm beginning today, I want you to see a number of lessons that we should learn as the people of God. Number one, there is a cry for restoration. There is a cry for restoration. Look at verse 1 of Psalm 80. Here's what it says. Listen, shepherd of Israel, who leads Joseph like a flock. You who are enthroned above the cherubim. Look at the next phrase. Shine forth. They are living in a time of darkness. And they remember that God, the Lord, was their shepherd when they obeyed him. God allowed them to prosper. The grace and the favor of God was upon them. But now they are held captive by the enemy. And now they are crying out to God. Listen, shepherd of Israel. The one who leads Joseph like a flock who are in front above the cherubim. He says, shine forth. And three times he uses that phrase. Look at verse 3. God, restore us and make your face shine upon us and we will be saved. That's in verse 3. Look down to verse 7. And he says again, God, restore us. Make your face shine upon us and we will be saved. Go down to verse 19. He says, God, restore us and make your face shine upon us and we will be saved. You know what happened? They turned away from God. They forsook God. They were no longer living a life of obedience. And now they are feeling the heat. Psalm 80 is a lament. It's a cry of a people that are hurting. They are people, they are crying out to God because somehow they are feeling as if God had abandoned them. Let me say to you, my friend, 
God gives us a choice. God gives you a choice. And that choice is to obey him. That choice is to walk before him and to live the kind of life that is pleasing to him. You understand this? God could have made us robots. God could have programmed us so that all he needed to do was to just press a button and he would get us to do or to say whatever he wanted us to do or to say. But God gave us the freedom and God says to us, I love you and I care about you and I lay before you a straight path. If you will walk in that path, if you will seek after me, God says the favor of God would rest upon you but when you decide to turn away from God you are turning away from the blessing from the favor from the smiling face of God so as we look at the psalm we see there is a cry for restoration in that cry number one you see there is a prayer of a people distressed by God's discipline they are distressed by the discipline of God. Here is what they cry. Hear us, shepherd of Israel, you who led Joseph like a flock, you who sit and front between the cherubim. Hear us, O oh God. They are crying out. They are praying. And it seems like God is not hearing their prayer. You and I know this very well. When we are walking in fellowship with God, when our lives are patterned after God, when we are truly seeking him and we are walking with him, we can come in confidence. Knowing that when we pray, God will hear us. God will answer us. It's the Lord Jesus Christ who says to us in, in, in John chapter 15, he says, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask anything. And he says, God will grant it on to you. In other words, when I abide in him, when you abide in him, when our lives are walking in obedience to him, you understand that God's will becomes our will, our will becomes comes God's will and when we come to God asking him so his will can be done in our lives God answers our prayers but there we see Israel they are crying to be restored and they pray and they ask Lord restore us restore us restore your favor upon us but because they chose to disobey God to walk away from God they are feeling they are distressed by the discipline of God in Psalms 106 the psalmist records these words then he gave them into the hand of the nations and those who hated them ruled over them their enemies also oppressed them and they were subdued on their their power many times he would deliver them they however were rebellious in their counsel and so sank down they sank down in their iniquity he turned away from god and God says, the blessing of my presence is no longer with you. You look at verse 16 of Psalm 80. Here's what this verse says. It is burned with fire. It is cut down. They perish. The rebuke of the face at the rebuke of the face of God. The psalmist is saying, God rebukes them God is no longer walking with them because they have turned their backs from God God had sent the prophet Jeremiah and Jeremiah pleaded with them turn back to God come back to God when you choose to walk away from God all you are doing is bringing disaster upon yourself my friend, you can have stuff, you can have things, you can have 
money, you can have name. But if you don't have the favor of God upon your life, you have absolutely nothing. My friend, it is better to have the favor of God and the presence of God in your life, the grace of God pouring into your life than to have the material things of life. And the children of Israel are crying because God no longer shines on them. The prophet Jeremiah recorded these words in chapter 31. He says, I have surely heard Ephraim grieving. You have chastised me and I was chastised like an own tree in the calf. Bring me back that I may be restored, for you are the Lord my God. And in chapter 40, verse 2 and 3, when the commander of the guard found Jeremiah, he said, The Lord your God decreed this disaster for this place. And now the Lord has brought it about. He has done just as he said he would all this happened because you people sinned against the Lord and did not obey his voice. The prayer of a people distressed by God's discipline. They are distressed by a feeling of abandonment. They feel like they have been abandoned by God. Let me say this to you. There is no greater feeling than the thought that God has abandoned you. There is no worse feeling, my friend, than the thought that God no longer shines on you. That God is no longer guiding and directing your life. You can have the accolades of anybody you can have the blessings of anybody. Anybody can, lie, can, can write a letter of reference for you and say all kinds of nice things about you. But in God's sight, if you do not have the favor and the blessing upon your life, it's as if you have nothing. And more than anything, my friend, Israel, they are crying out to God and they are feeling as if God had abandoned them. Look at verse 2. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, awaken your might and come and save us. They say to God, Lord, awaken your strength. My friend, to feel like God is asleep, to feel like I pray and God does not hear me. To feel like I beg of him and somehow he is ignoring me. They're saying, Lord, we feel like we have been abandoned by you. We say, they're saying to him, Lord, wake up, get up, wake, waken your strength and come and save us. As we look at Psalm 80, we see that the nation is facing a trial of faith, feeling like they are separated from God. God is angry with them, and it seems like God is silent. To think that God can be silent, to feel like God is asleep, over and over again, the Scripture says to us, he that keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The psalmist says, the Lord is at your right hand. The scripture tells us, God says to us, I will never leave you. I will never abandon you. Yet the people of God are feeling as if God had abandoned them. My friend, understand, whenever there is a feeling that God has abandoned you, remember, God has not moved one inch. God has not moved one inch. 
When there is a feeling or as if God is silent, when there is a feeling as if God has abandoned us, it is you and I, my friend, who have turned away from walking with God. See, God created us so that we could have a personal relationship with him. God created us, God loves us, and God cares for us. And as I mentioned last week, you could basically sum up the whole Bible in these words. God is continually saying, come, come, come. And while God says, come, God says to us, come, you and I are drifting further and further away from him. We don't spend very much time with him. We don't open up his word enough to find out what God's counsel is for our life. And God is saying, I love you and I care for you. And I want to have close communion with you if you will only take the time and draw near to me. The children of Israel, they turned away from God. And the blessings of God were no longer on their lives. And in Psalm 18 verse 4, they cry, how long? How long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? Think about it. Look at the verse. The verse says, how long, Lord God Almighty, will your anger smolder against the prayers of your people? They are praying, and as if God is angry with their prayers. The only time God gets angry with our prayers the only time when God does not approve or God listens to, does not listen to our prayers, the psalmist David says it in Psalm 66 and verse 18, if I regard sin in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. So they are crying out for restoration. They are crying out and they are saying, Lord, restore us. Bring us back to yourself. Lord, the, the, the state that we find ourselves in, it's a miserable state. It's a miserable state to live as if the shining light of God's presence, the shining of God's face is not upon you. And they are crying out and they're saying, Lord, save us. Lord, restore us. Lord, revive us. There's a great darkness that is sweeping over America. You can see the emblem of it as you open up your, as you turn on your television and you see the news. America is getting further and further into a state of moral darkness. And my friend, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is supposed to be a light, we ourselves are sinking into that part of moral darkness. And I believe there is a cry out loud and clear, Lord, restore us. Lord, revive us. Lord, do a new work in our life. We sang this song earlier on. The song says, Revive us, O God. Revive us. Open up our lives once again. Cause us to listen once again. Cause us to long and to seek after you once again. My friend, may I say to you today, the only hope for this country, the only hope for the church of Jesus Christ is for us to return to God in revival. Lord, may we all pray. May we all begin to cry out in our closets. 
May we all begin to cry out in our homes. Lord, restore us. Lord, revive us. Lord, cause your face to shine upon us more than anything else, my friend. We need to be assured of the shining face of God's presence upon our lives. Otherwise, darkness will set in. And when there is darkness, my friend, as the children of Israel experience, it is a dreadful thing to feel as if God has abandoned you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask you. Lord, your people have strayed far from you. But Lord, you are a God who is full of compassion. Lord, you are a God who says to your people, if you will return to me, I will return to you. As is recorded in 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and I will restore their land. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus, Restore his land. I ask you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, restore this church. I ask you, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, restore every man and woman, every boy and girl. Because, Father, we are nothing without you. As the songwriter says, without him, I could do nothing. Without him, I surely fail. Without him, my life would be hopeless. But with Jesus, thank God, I'm saved. Lord, we need the presence of Jesus. We need the power of your spirit. Lord, we need a spiritual awakening in our lives. We need a spiritual awakening in the life of your church. Lord, I pray that every Child of God, wherever they are, will begin to sound out this cry. Lord, restore us. Restore us. Cause your face to shine upon us. Restore us in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I invite you to... Join us again next time as we continue on this message. Lord, shine on us. I invite you to just begin to cry out to God and pray and ask him to restore you. Restore your family. Restore your church. God bless you. And I pray that he would walk with you all this week, guide your life, and draw you to himself. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.